Amy, welcome to the cave. Thank you all for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Exciting times. I don't think you've slept for like almost two weeks now. No, I haven't. I've been so anxious. <laughs> so uh, listen to the viewers that can tune in. They'll see you on a blurry edit. But Netflix is the number one show right now still, right? Yes. Which is number crazy. one. Yeah. <laughs> how, does that, how does that make you feel? I don't even know. It's overwhelming. I mean, yeah. I, I feel so I feel so grateful that people are enjoying it. You know, it was our baby for so long, so it's so cool to see it out and and, and people watching it. Yeah, because it's been done filming for over a year now, too, right? Yeah, yeah, we wrapped last year in November. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna jump more into the show in a few minutes, but uh, I want to like get to know a little bit more about you. Like, uh, how did like every person has a journey into the entertainment industry? What's yours? Like, what made you get into this? Was this always the plan? was I think ever since I was a kid I wanted to do acting I just didn't have the confidence to really go after it and it wasn't until I graduated with a completely different degree that I realized it was always in the back of my head it was always something mm. I wanted to do and it was 2019 I thought okay I'm gonna pursue acting professionally 2019 future's bright yeah. and then of course 2020 happened and it ended up being a very fortunate year for me acting wise because mm. a lot of things were accessible because of the pandemic and everything was on zoom so i was able to audition for things over zoom and self-tape and from there it took a while but i got my first call back which was for obliterated and then ended up booking that after a a, a long few weeks yeah so what else like what was your major that you said you graduated with i i majored in linguistics Okay. So languages. Yeah. Wow. I love languages. Yeah. Yeah. How many can you speak? How many different ones can you speak? Um, my Japanese is really rusty. Um, and sign language. Mm. Yeah. Is, do you have like a, a plan? Do you want to learn more? I want to, I would love to keep pursuing languages. Um, but acting kind of has taken, taken over and, and then acting has always been my first love. So yeah. How did that conversation go with your, with your family about, oh, you're going to pursue acting. You're going the opposite way. Honestly, they were really supportive. Um, okay. it's, I come from a family full of artists, so okay. they were surprisingly supportive. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel really fortunate. Are you the first one for TV and film? Actually, no. My On my mom's side, my great-great-grandpa, I don't know exactly the lineage, but he was a famous Japanese comedic actor back mm -hmm. in the vaudeville days. And he has a Wikipedia page and everything. And, and he was um, really influential in the Japanese comedy scene. So there's always been a love for film and the film industry in my family. My grandpa worked in the film industry, wanted to be an actor and didn't quite make it as an actor. But so I think there's something in the family that has drawn us to acting and to the world of film and TV. Yeah. You mentioned comedy. Is that your forego? Do you like the comedy the best out of everything? I, I definitely have such a soft spot for comedy and it's where I started and I did stand up for a few years and I mean comedy was a way that my family bonded we would watch a lot of stand up watch a lot of comedy movies and so it's always mm -hmm. felt like a passion of mine yeah mm -hmm. but I would love to branch out and do I, I love acting so you mentioned your stand up do you want to like try to keep doing that once in a while jump on that open mic stage or maybe I mean I think I think I realized doing stand up that I liked acting more Mm. but it was, I mean, invaluable to, to just get better at writing and get better at riffing and improv. I mean, I think it's, I think everyone should try stand up once. Mm. Who are like some of your like uh, favorite people to watch doing comedy or stand up comedy? Actually, recently I watched a special by Shane Wang and he is um Asian comedian, had a Netflix special that was produced by Ali Wong, was excellent. That's a recent mm -hmm. one that I really liked. Yeah. Th that was on Netflix? Yeah, that's on Netflix. Well, you're part of the Netflix family now, so you get yeah, everything. Yeah. I know, I'm just promoting this stuff. <laughs> yeah. There you go. What about for like the acting world and everything? Is there somebody that you look up to and you try to watch their projects or films or just to make your, make your craft better and better? Man, I'm, uh, there are so many actors I admire. I'm a big admirer of performers. Uh, I love Laura Dern. I think her roles are amazing. The obvious ones, Meryl Streep's The Goat. Um, also Florence Pugh is, is someone who's around my age who I really look up to an amazing actress and, uh, a lot of, it's kind of, it's kind of random, but I really like Steve Buscemi and he's, okay. yeah. he's, I love him in Coen brothers projects. So I love the Coen brothers. So I, my taste kind of goes all over the place. I'll just, 
really eat up a lot of performances and admire people for, I mean, just across the board. And he's funny too. Like you ever watch like those Adam Sandler movies, the roles that he puts him into play in those. I actually haven't even seen him in an Adam Sandler. That's, that's so funny. I, I should see that because he's hilarious and everything yeah. I've seen, he's hilarious. He's got such a cool look. Yeah. Yeah. But, he's a, he, but he can also play the serious role very well too. He could be scary. Yeah. He can be intimidating. Like, like, I don't know if you ever watched The Sopranos when he was on it. He was pretty good in that. No, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't even seen The Sopranos. See, uh, there's a lot of classic TV that I still need to watch. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So um, throughout the throughout the your entertainment uh, journey and everything, like, uh, what's the goal? Do you have like a goal that you try you want to try to accomplish? I know you've you got a number one show right now, so I guess that's a pretty good goal. But I know you got something else that you want to tackle. I mean, yeah, I think I think I have a lot of internal goals. I have a lot of things that I'm aiming for. Um, I think aim high because you never know where you'll land on that scale. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think ultimately my, one of my main goals is to be working with the best filmmakers, the best yeah. actors and the best in the industry and, and making the best work that is being made. I think, I mean, I think that's so subjective. So I have a little, I have a little specifics, but I keep them to myself because I like it to, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I yeah, it's sort of like making a wish. You don't want to tell people exactly what yeah. the wish is. But right. but the but the goal is to be working with the best of the best. And I think that however that manifests. How about a role? You've you've got the comedy role right now. Is there like a specific role? Like uh, a lot of people like lately with my interviews are saying DC or Marvel. Or is there anything like you want to try to Man, I mean I mean that would be an honor. Um I, because I'm so green, I'm so new, I think I am just happy to be working. The fact mm. that I booked a comedy role is amazing. And I think I just want to keep, um, I, I never want to get stuck in a box. So I think just being able to embody a lot of different types of characters, wherever that may go, I'm, I'm open to, and I'm open to that changing. Maybe I'll, I'll reach a point in my career where I'm sick of doing one kind of role and I want to do one, but because everything yeah. is so new, I'm really open. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. I, mentioned, <clears throat> I mentioned earlier, you know, I had Terrence on last week and he gave me a little tip of a, how uh, you got the show. So let's jump into the show. Tell us a little bit about your audition for this and what happened. Well, so I I, mean, I started as an unknown in Seattle, right? Like barely any credits, mostly did commercials. Um, got this audition, sent in a self-tape, did not think I was going to get it at all because I'm a nobody from Seattle. So I just thought I'm just going to have a lot of fun with it because it was such a funny script. Yeah. Sent it in, didn't expect anything. And then I got a call back and it was my first call back. And I was so excited. Again, I thought, no way I'm getting this. There's just no way. So I was like, I'm just going to have fun. This callback was on Zoom and it ended up getting a screen test. The screen test is basically they record it, send it to the studio. Studio approves it. They send it to the network, which is Netflix. Okay. And then they pick their finals. So from there, I thought, wow, I'm just grateful I made it this far because I really thought, okay, screen test, this is probably the last round I'm going to get to. Right. No way they're going to pick me. Um, and I think that mindset was really liberating because I just had fun. And then it got down to three. And then my agent was like, all right, so they let go the other two girls. So it's just you, but they can't bring only you to Netflix. So they're going to try to find someone else because Netflix needs to choose. They can't just uh... be the one option. Yeah. So it took weeks and then they found someone. And eventually my agent was telling me in my decades of being here I have never had to wait this long for an answer because usually you screen test you get an answer within a few days yeah. and we were already pushing a few weeks and shooting was in a week so it was it was really the last piece of the puzzle I think for the production then finally I had a a day where I was just waiting by my phone waiting for the call of if I got it or not because it was me and someone else and it was the day that my toilet exploded and all over my apartment and I was I smelled like toilet water and I get the call that I didn't get it and meanwhile I'm broke like I can barely afford a new toilet and toilets are not that expensive mm. I mean they're depending but to me it was like wow I'm gonna have to shell out two hundred dollars I don't really have for this toilet and I think thinking man I I was so close to, yeah. to booking a major project that would have changed my life. Um, so I grieved that for a few days and then I kind of moved on. I thought, well, I mean, 
did I really think I was going to get it? I, it's amazing. I made it this far, Like being mm -hmm. someone from Seattle, this is amazing. So I felt really grateful and I just thought I just had a fire under my ass and I was like, okay, let's just, let's, let's use this momentum. Let's try to find other work. And then a week later, I, I make playlists for my characters. So I deleted that playlist because I thought, oh, I don't need a Maya playlist anymore. And then I got a call and it's all of my agents and it's basically them saying, hey, are you ready to move? And I'm like, what? And you're like, you booked it, you booked obliterated. And I was like, no, I didn't. Uh, I, I, you told me I didn't book that. Um, and they're like, no, yeah, you, they um, are going a different direction. And um, are you, how soon could you fly out? And basically within two days, I was in Albuquerque trying to find an apartment because wow. we were shooting for four months. I didn't even have a suitcase. So that day I went and I bought a big suitcase. I didn't have any, I was not prepared at all. Um, but the cast was so welcoming and I think I was so fish out of water that I, I was so fight or flight. I didn't even have, have time to blink or think. I was just wow. like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And, and I they already started like, filming, right? Is that what I heard? No, they had already started filming. So yeah. I was coming in, they had already done a table read. They had already done training. They had already done rehearsals. So I was coming in kind of dropping right in. Mm. And I was really nervous because I wasn't sure how they would receive someone in the middle of filming, if, yeah. you know, but, but the cast was just such a dream. They were so supportive. And I think they knew that I would be nervous and I was kind of green. So they really, um, they really supported me. Yeah, that's awesome. like baby steps. They brought you in slowly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, that's awesome. So we see you as a as tech with Maya. What was the description you were given this character? I think it was adorable, um, awkward, really smart. Um, has a huge crush on the team leader. Yeah, and gets into some hot water with her boss. Something, something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, because yeah. like, you, like you know, the first few episodes we see, yeah, you're like, you're kind of like not sheltered, but you're in your own, your own little spot there. You're the van yeah. and everything. You're away from everybody else. You're quiet, yeah. or you have a couple few funny lines happening in there. Then we don't see you again for a little bit. Then we see you. I don't want to give out too many spoilers, but yeah, I mean, you're and you're like the young. Are you the youngest one? You're supposed to be the youngest one in the group yes. too. Yeah, 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 yeah and, so and, and it, it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say it, it mirrored a lot of how I was really feeling on set. Mm. I was the youngest on set. I was the newest on set. Everyone else I really looked up to as they had, they had credits, they had experience. They were, they had been in LA and I felt fish out of water in the same way Maya did. So I really connected mm. with her on that aspect. So like, how did you like connect with this character? Like, how did you try to play her? Because like Terrence told me he had to like work out two, three times a day just to prepare for this role because he's huge and everything, but like, what kind of training did you have to do for this role? Because, oh, you, because you, you just pretty much, like you said, two days you were yeah. there. Yeah. So for me, thank, thank God that Maya is not super ripped, super cool, badass. Right. So Maya's yeah. nerdy. She's out of shape. She's um, nervous. So I really felt like I could sink into my body and be myself. I didn't have to mm. look any type of way. Um, there's a lot more pressure for the lead, other leads to, to be actually fit and strong. Yeah. And I was lucky that Maya was supposed to be out of breath and kind of get me out of here. And I was like, I can do that. So I felt there was permission for me to just kind of be myself. Really the, the, the stuff that I focused on was I just wanted to learn a little bit more about tech and mm. the jargon. I wanted to learn more. I just wanted to look smooth typing. I wanted to feel a little more fluent in what that entailed so I did my own research on that um and yeah but but physically I felt like I just wanted to stay um fit in terms of being able to do long days on set not necessarily look yeah. ripped and badass yeah. yeah you mentioned tech and everything did you go to watch any tech movies or certain shows just to get a feel I did yeah I watched um I don't really remember specifics, but I would watch clips where there were tech experts and kind of okay. see the way that they would be portrayed. And um, yeah, and, and then also see ones, just kind of sort of get in, get some inspiration on that. Yeah. 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 What, do you, what do you think for like this role, like, what, the biggest challenge for this role? Man, I think the biggest challenge, I think the biggest challenge was 
Maya can be really, um, and I say this with love, she can be very whiny in the series. She can be mm -hmm. really kind of slowing down the team. And I think me naturally, Kimmy, I am, uh, I, I really don't like to slow things down. I really want to be efficient. I don't want to complain, you know, I, 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 and so I think that was a little bit harder for me to connect to with Maya. I had to really find that because there would be times where I thought, girl, stop complaining, <laughs> get up, <laughs> there's a new. So yeah. I think that's where I felt different than her was where she'd be like, oh, I don't want to do this. And, and trying to find a way to do that where it's still funny and not completely playing victim the whole time. So that was a difficult challenge, I think, for me. For like Maya, like uh, if the big three for, you know, the Cobra Kai creators that created this show gave you a piece of paper and a pencil and said, if there's anything you want to change about her, would you change anything about her? No, I would keep her, I would keep her the same because I think everything happens for a reason. Um, I think she has to go through, she, I mean, the, I mean, she's, she's like a baby. So she has to go through the, the complaining and the whining. Mean, she's out of her element. Yeah. She is not trained for this. She's also a little bit on substances and she doesn't usually. And I think she has to learn to suck it up, be strong and find her inner badass. And I think that's yeah. her journey. So I think she has to go through that to really, really look at herself and say, what am I doing? You know, where, how can I help? You said journey and I have it written down right here. Like how, how do you describe her journey through these eight episodes? Yeah, I think, I think I would sum it up with Maya's on her journey to find her confidence, find her mm. inner peace. I think she's constantly trying to be something she's not. She's looking at these people who are, she sees as so much cooler, so much more capable. She doesn't realize how cool and how capable she is. And throughout the episodes, you know, like, I don't want to give out too much away. You know, uh, we see your character has a crush on Chad, which is by Nick Zano. And then we also have a relationship with Ava, which is played by Shelly. Like, how would you, that's like a mess everywhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think... Yeah, the, I think the intricate relationship dynamics were so fun to play because the actors are so fun to work with. Shelly and Nick were so great to work with. And I really admired Shelly because I knew of her work before I came to set. Yeah. And she, I looked up to her so much, man. I was so nervous around her and she's beautiful. So, <laughs> wow, she's so cool. She's so badass and beautiful. So the scene when Maya is complimenting Ava was barely acting. I mean, I was just sort of complimenting Shelly because I just, I just really admire her and really look up to her. And she really took me in almost like a little sister. Yeah. And she's funny too, Maya, because like there's times where like you say like, I can't remember what the line was, but like, you know, like you'd be talking about Chad or you say like that one line because you know you have a crush on him and it's like everybody's yeah. looking at you like. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> she's hilarious. Um. Yeah. Yeah, she had great reactions. She's a great straight man. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite yeah. Maya quote? This man, there are so many good quotes that they gave Maya. Um, I really like your dick is a trap. I really like um, uh, they have ice cream here uh, in episode two. She's just really earnest. So yeah. it's hard to pick one. That's awesome. And, and you got some good scenes too. Like the, I, I wrote down here a few scenes. Like one of them was the, the scorpions yeah you're trapped in that well was it was it a well i forget or a cave that or something pit. like that yeah, yeah, pit. yeah so yeah tell us about that oh man that was so fun to shoot that was actually shot on a sound stage and also in the desert okay. so they cut it up seamlessly so you can't really tell when you're in, in the sound stage when you're in the desert and we shot most of those scorpions were cgi so i wasn't actually with scorpions yeah. but we did get some shots of real scorpions so there were scorpion wranglers on set. They brought it to the soundstage. We got some shots with them. Um, but I would say shooting with Paula, who plays Gomez, was so fun because the character dynamics are hilarious because Paula, I mean, Gomez is, is such a badass. And she has to hype up Maya, who is weak and tired. And that dynamic was really fun to play. And, and being able to just like, the stunt where I flip upside down and it's like, you know, we're scared of the scorpions. There was something so cathartic about it. And I felt like that was a real shift for Maya where she really realizes I got to get my shit together. I, I, I can do this. And it's Gomez in part who imbues her with that spirit. You mentioned like the stunts. Are you, were you able to do your own stunts or did you actually have a stunt double? 
So I had a stunt double for some things. And one of those was they actually built and rigged a whole falling um, stunt in the desert. So the stunt mm. would fall into the pit, which would, would have been too dangerous for me. So I just did a shot where I'm like kind of fall out of camera. So fall out of frame. And then they had a stunt will do the fall into the pit. Mm, okay. Yeah. I got, I got to find out. I got to ask, uh, were, are you, were you a varsity blues fan? How did that clip come in with the whole whipped cream thing? I was, actually that, your, had was that your first, idea or was that actually the writer's idea? That was written. <laughs> that was actually one of the audition scenes. So that was okay. written. Wow. And I had never seen varsity blues. So I had no idea the reference until I looked okay. it up. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the creators like the old school stuff. So they always try to bring the old school stuff into the new stuff. Exactly, exactly. So I've learned a lot about um, old school films from just shooting this. Yeah, wow. Now, is there, what's like your favorite scene, Amaya, you think? Oh my God, that's a great question. Honestly, I really liked shooting. I really liked the fantasy sequence in episode seven um, and the hospital scene coming, that whole sequence was so fun to shoot because um, Maya gets to go through so many different emotional states and you kind of get to see a different side of her. And that's also the moment where she realizes she's been very distracted the whole mission and that she needs to snap out of it. So I really like that scene and it was so fun to shoot. Nick is great to shoot with. How disappointed are you that you, you're like one of the old people that I didn't see you next to Skittles the camel? Wait, next to the camel. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember seeing you in any of the. Were you? Uh, did I miss? Oh, anything? I, I, what? Well, I am next to Skittles in one scene. One scene okay. in episode seven when I come in, walk in on Ava and McKnight. Okay. I see but, the camel, and then I <laughs> see them. Yeah, so I got one little scene with Skittles. <laughs> Was that actual real camel on set? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We love Skittles. Yeah. He was there or she, I think Skittles is she, um, Skittles took a poop in the hallway, peed in the hallway while we were shooting. So there was some, there was some cleanup for Skittles. Uh, has there been any word on a season two yet or anything you've heard? Not yet. I'm okay. hopeful. Yeah. The reason I'm asking it is for, if we get a season two, who are you hoping for? You have more scenes with going into season two that you didn't get a chance to work with a lot on season one. I mean, I would love to work with Terrence. Um, I didn't get a lot of scenes with Terrence. Um, so that would be really nice. Yeah. Uh, how was it uh, collaborating out with the, with the creators of this? They were so easy to collaborate with because they were so um, generous and really attentive and they really let us improv a lot. They really, really? took our feedback. Um, There'd be times where I I'm, I'm felt like I wanted a prop and then they would be like, yeah, let's get you a prop. And, and, and so they were really receptive to our ideas. And that's, mm. I don't think that's always the case. So I feel really grateful for them. So we mentioned also like, this is one of your first uh, big things. Like, what are you hoping for like the audience when they watch you? What do you hope they remember out of your performance for this one? I think I just want people to walk away feeling like, I was really earnest. Um, I was vulnerable and um, I, I found some truth in Maya that there was something that people could relate to in her. Great. All right. So we have eight episodes in Netflix. Uh, what's next for you now? Any other projects you're allowed to tell us about that you working on or coming out? No, not as of yet. Um, I think we will see in the new year how things, the industry right now is sort of um, slowing down for winter. So yeah. we'll see how things go in the new year. But yeah, I'm really excited to work on other projects. How, how's the fan reaction been with this show? Like, and like your social media, are they hitting you up now? Messages, pictures? Yeah. yeah, people are really nice. People are sending really nice messages. I wasn't expecting that. Mm. Um, people are, are, yeah, it's been overwhelming. It's been really positive too. And and I've always thought the internet was like a dark and scary place, but right. people have been so really connecting to Maya. And I think I'm pleasantly surprised and happy that they are. It's amazing. Kimmy, yeah. how can, speaking of social media now, how can the viewers and the listeners uh, find you on social media? Oh yeah, you can 
Follow me on Instagram at Kimmy Rutledge, K-I-M-I-R-U-T-L-E-D-G-E. That's usually where I'm at. Kimmy, this was great. And if we get a season two, let's get you back on or a future project. Yes, absolutely. So, so yeah.